Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode 2 of this Derby County career mode. Thank you again for joining me in this. Um, we start off with some training in this, in this episode today. Um, today's episode is going to consist of a bit more transfers or actually inquiring about players rather than just looking at the shortlist and also the first match in the league and the first match in the EFL Cup. Uh, you've just seen the background here, just a few inquiries going on. We've got Angus Gunn, the goalkeeper, Dominic Iorfa, Harry Winks and Bradley Dack are the four players that we are inquiring for. Um, you see there Chris Baird has been sold to Birmingham and Wolves will come back and said for Dominic Iorfa, the 21 year old right back, they want £2 million for him. So we said to them we'll give you £1.4 million and if you accept that, then we'll be happy with that. If I don't accept it, we might go possibly up to about 1.8 million, I'd say. We'll have to see what they said. Um, also, Ang all the other inquiries come back. Angus Gunn, they want 1.3 million pounds for a young goalkeeper. As I said, we're using more as a rotation for Scott Carson. Obviously, Scott Carson's getting a bit old now as well, so he can be used in the future. Um, Tottenham come back for Harry Winks, 1.1 million for him. Good young midfielder, maybe not the greatest midfielder ever, but he is young. He has still got room to grow and would hopefully be a good addition to our side, so we offer for him. And also Bradley Dack from Gillingham. Um, you might not have heard of Brad Bradley Dack from Gillingham, but on this game he is a quality player. Um, he's only, I think, 22 years old. So we put in an offer for him. Um, we put Bradley Johnson in the offer because he's 29 years old, right? He's 71. So we felt that... Um, Bradley Dack has more potential than him so we'd rather get him and swap him with um, Johnson and £500,000 and see where that ends us up. Aston Miller offer for Tom Ince but no matter what off Tom Ince. Um, so we carry on here and we get some offers accepted. Gillingham accept the offer for Bradley Dack so we'll put in a contract offer for him. He wants £8,000 so we'll give him what he wants. And, well, actually, we put an £8,500 a week for him. Put him as a squad rotation player, because he won't be first choice. We will still put Bryson in that attacking midfield role, but we will use Bradley Dack quite a bit. And Dominic Iorfa, he would be a first choice right back if we do get him. So, hopefully, we will be able to get him. Um, getting off for Scott Carson, as I said, he is our first choice goalkeeper, so we're not going to accept that from Burnley. £1.7 million from Premier League side. And uh, Spurs accept off for Harry Winks. Um, I think about 800,000 I think it was, so we offer him £15,000 a week, which is what he wanted. Four-year contract as a sporadic first-team player, so he won't play week in, week out. He probably will play sort of once every eight games or so. Um, Angus Gunn's offer did get rejected at £800,000 by City, so he said we'll give him a million. They said they still want 1.3, but we'll try out a million and see what they say about it. As I said, he will be more of a rotation player, so don't want to spend too much on him. Um, we're getting off from Bray Wanderers for Charles Vernon, £45,000. He's worth 60000 but we're not going to use him. 21 years old, 51 rated. We've got a lot better strikers. Uh, um, some youngsters with better potential and also just some better strikers around with Vidra, Darren Bent. We've got Mason Bennett as well. So I feel like Vernon wouldn't get played. So it's just easier if we sell him and get him off our books and that allows room in the squad for us to bring some more players in, really. Um, so as you see there, the training was done and after that Bradley Dack accepted his contract so he brought him straight into the club and also Dominic Iorfa who as I said will be our first choice right back and when we've got Cyrus Christie, 68 rated but Iorfa 69 rated at 21 years old, great potential so we are going to bring him in and put him as our first choice right back Harry Winks also accepts the contract as well so that's three players we've got in now which is great for us. Three of the four players we were looking to buy. And Man City do accept a £1 million offer for Angus Gunn. So put in a contract for him, £10,000 a week as a squad rotation player. And luckily, he accepts the deal as well. So all four players that we inquired for, all four players that we wanted, we have managed to get. Um, you'll see in the background in just a second the new team that we have got with the new signings. As you can see there, it's pretty much the same team. It's just Dominic Oil for coming in at right back. So Russell, Vidra and Ince is the front three. Hughes, Bryson and Fawn as a midfield. Olsen, Shackle, Keo and Dominic Iorfa as a back four and Scott Carson in goal. Um, we've got Angus Gunn, Bradley Dack on the bench and Harry Winks on the reserves. But he will still get, he will still get played, but just not week in, week out. Um, so first game is a league uh, championship game against Brighton at home. Knew it was going to be a tough game. Brighton are a great side, but so are we. And obviously we are at home as well. So we were looking to get at least a point from this game, preferably the win. But the first chance does fall to Brighton, just five minutes in. Um, ball falls to Bruno Saltor here. He plays the Glen Murray. 
whose shot gets deflected and it falls to Kazeng Lualua who just misses the just misses the post with his header. Really unfortunate of Kazeng Lualua. Did have to adjust his body a little bit to get the header in, but we were lucky to not be down one nil early on. Um, 20 minutes in and we get our first real chance of the game. Tom Ince swings the ball in with his left foot and Craig Bryson just misses the target. It did turn out that it came for defender, so it turned out to be great defending. Um, we get the corner from it, but the corner doesn't really amount to anything. Um, third chance of the game, full to Brighton, 15 minutes after our chance. And but uh, cross gets deflected, which falls to Gazengalu Alua. The ball flies over everyone. Ball comes in. Scott Carson punches it out. Not the greatest punch ever. Falls straight back to Lualua. Ball finds its way to Rowan Ince, and Carson pulls off a cracking save to block Rowan Ince's shot. And you'll see here again, Scott Carson comes to our rescue again. Ball gets played through. Slice and open our defence, Tamar Hemed, and Scott Carson makes another quality save. That shows why he is our first choice goalkeeper and why we're not looking for another first choice we are just looking for a rotation so the corner comes in from that chance scott carson catches it again he's having a great game out here today and we sit off from a break matic feed replays it tom ince tom ince against anthony knockhart uses pace breaks forward up against pocanolia cuts inside plays the ball into um Matic Vidru plays it to will hughes on his stronger left foot and he just misses the target i genuinely thought that was going in and a cracking break from our boys and a cracking shot from Will Hughes just about wide. And in the second half, our first chance comes to Matic Vidra. The ball actually falls to Tom Ince, who just sort of the ball just sort of hits his head and then Vidra jumps and couldn't quite steer it in, which was really unfortunate. But then um after that, most of the chances are falling to Brighton here. As you see, Glenn Murray just in the target with that right footed shot. And then a poor throw from Scott Carson here. Finds a way to knock out, finds a way to Murray. And Kyle has a shot, and that just flies over as well. For some reason, the footage of the second, or sort of the last 20, 25 minutes of that game did cut out for some reason. I don't know why, but I can assure you that, that game did finish 0-0 anyway. Um, I can't remember whether there were any real opportunities anyway. But the game did end 0-0, so we didn't miss too much. Um, as you can see, though, we are looking for a new striker. We inquired about four players. We looked at Fraser Campbell, Abel Hernandez, Danny Ings and Connor Wickham. Um, after that 0-0 draw, I just didn't feel like we had enough firepower up front. So I felt like a new striker with Premier League experience and a great player would come in handy. Um, so we put in an offer of, I think it was £1 million there for Fraser Campbell. Abel Hernandez, they wanted £6 million, which I thought was a bit too much for him. Danny Ings, they wanted £14 million, which I know he has great potential, but I still felt that was a bit too much and we couldn't really afford him anyway. But Conor Wickham, £4.5 million we put in enough for him. They wanted six, but we put in four and a half. He is the player that we do really want is Conor Wickham rather than sort of Fraser Campbell. The player that we do want is Conor Wickham. So hopefully Crystal Palace will come back and accept that or at least say for like £500,000 more you can have him, which we'll be happy to do. Um, second game of this episode then is against Notts County in the EFL Cup. It's away from home. You saw me just before just rotating the squad a little bit just to keep players fitness up and just to give some other players games. We've got Angus Gunn making his debut in goal. We've got Bradley Dack making his debut. Um, but the first chance does fall to Notts County. 15 minutes in, it's Jonathan Forte who really should be doing better from there. They managed to break through our defence. Forte using his pace. And the first chance of the game fell to the home side, who were big underdogs because everyone would expect Derby to win this game. But away from home, it's not an easy game. And there weren't really many chances up until the 45th minute, so just before half time. Ball finds its way to Andy Vyman, who uses his pace and his strength, cuts inside. He looks to, looks to create an opening, has a fairly poor shot, but it comes back off the post, hits the goalkeeper, and really unfortunately for Notts County, it goes in off the goalkeeper for an own goal. A great breakaway from us from Scott Carson's throw you saw, but it was really unfortunate for Notts County. Great play by Andy Vyman. He ran from about the halfway line, cut inside, got a shot in. It wasn't the greatest shot ever. Didn't have a lot of power on it. Here's the post. Come back. Come back. Hit, hit the goalkeeper on the back and unfortunately goes in. But coming into this um, second half, Notts County get the first real chance. Great first save there by Angus Gunn. Ball comes to their other player. Another great save by Angus Gunn. Ball comes over top and unfortunately Notts County player does get his head on the ball. Really unfortunate Really unfortunate for Angus Gunn. They made two cracking saves from close range. But the ball just gets looped over him and their player, I think it's Michael O'Connor. Um, yeah, it's Michael O'Connor. 
he headers ahead of our player and Notts County draw level 1 all. But luckily for us, just about two, three minutes later, Rich Keogh wins a header from a Notts County drop kick. Ball finds his way to Harry Winks, he finds Bradley Dack. Darren Bent gets on the ball, cracking turn by Darren Bent, and he fires in with his left foot to give us to restore the lead for us and bring us 2-1 up. Cracking goal by Darren Bent. Obviously, he knows we're looking for a new striker, so he's up to up his game a little bit. Great turn by him and great finish with his weaker left foot. That is what we like to see from our striker. And we are now in front again. So, 2-1 up. And hopefully, we'll be able to hold out. We were looking to build on this lead. But obviously, if we couldn't build on it, then we'd still be in the lead. But Bradley Dack really looks building it here. He cuts inside onto his left foot, and that's a really poor shot from Bradley Dack. He really should do better. I know it was on his left foot, which is his weaker foot, but he really should be doing better from that sort of range. And then, unfortunately for us, the game just goes a little bit downhill here. When the creator of our first goal, Andy Vyman, you can see there, does pick up an injury. He just sort of ran into their player as the ball came to him. And he has to go off injured. Find out after the game how long is he out for. But it been Matic Vidra just on in that sort of attacking midfielder role for him. Just, sort of, just to see out the last sort of five minutes of the game. And straight away Vidra gets a chance. Comes through. But again he should be doing better. I don't know why he took it on his left foot. He is right footed. So I don't know what his thinking of doing that on his left foot was. But either foot really should really be doing better than that. And then we try to fashion another chance from the corner. Oyolf plays the ball in, but unfortunately the defender just steers it into the keeper's arms. And then we go into stoppage time. This is the last real attack of the game. So we, as you can probably guess, we do end up winning this game 2-1. Ball falls to Vidra, air players defend it, and they clear it when the full-time whistle goes. So a 2-1 win. Not most convincing win against a League 2 side ever, but away from home. It's the first couple of games of the season, so all we wanted to do really was get the win and get through to the next round, and that is what we did. But we did not dominate. You saw at the end of the stats, we didn't dominate the game, so we need to pick up the performance a little bit. As you can see, the Fraser Campbell offer was accepted, so we put in a contract off for him, £40,000. And you also saw there that Andy Vyman is unfortunately out for three months, which is not very helpful at all. He wasn't our first choice left winger, but he was a great player to have as a backup, and... It's really unfortunate to have them out for three months. But that is going to draw this episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe and comment any improvements or anything you want to say. Um, as again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Cheers. Goodbye.